So we are live with Nedra Rosinas. Thanks for being here. And Nedra is, you have lots of things going on. You're a business owner, you do websites, but also marketing. You're a mom. You have a networking group, Wonder Women in Business. Tell us, Nedra, tell us all the things you do. Yeah. Um... Well, the first, the first thing I'm really excited about is I've been transitioning into like a marketing coaching role, which has been happening for many years. And, um, you know, that started with teaching people at the Small Business Development Center, these new, new small businesses, how to how to basically build their websites and not and, and, and avoid all the mistakes and, and hire the right people and and what they absolutely need on the website and what they can leave behind. Like that's where it really started. And, and the journey has been amazing. And and I realized um, I've been building websites for many lawyers and law firms. And I keep hearing over, over from them that they want more help with their marketing and trying to be, especially with the pandemic, um, trying to uh, be found and and not be able to network like they normally do. Like can't necessarily show up to like breakfasts and luncheons like they were before. And how do you, how do you interact with people on LinkedIn? How do you uh, go to virtual networking? All kinds of things. So I've been helping people really uh, hone in on building relationships and referral partners. Actually, I'm giving a workshop next Thursday. Uh, it's the first of its kind to help teach uh, some folks that were really interested in, in building referral partnerships and what that looks like and how to really reward people when they um, give you referrals to, to share, cherish them, you know? And you are so good at that. You're so good at building relationships and sending out thank you notes and telling people how valuable they are to you. And you are too, you've done that with me. So I think you, I think, Anne, you have a lot, you're, you're in the same situation. You're definitely understand the value. And it's almost like picking someone's love language, like understanding what, how to, how to reward them. You know, some people want the, the reward of time or some people want, um, uh, more help with, uh, systems or some people just really like, um, roses or chocolate, you know, everyone has different, different, um, I love a thank you. Yeah. Thank you <laughs> yeah, it, it just depends on the person. That's why building relationships is super important. So you know what the right thing to do is and don't, um, put your foot in your mouth and, and take time to build that relationship. It doesn't happen overnight. And then your, uh, your workshop coming up, is that open to anybody? Yeah. Yeah. I can um, share information with you after this to post. And yeah, it's definitely yeah. open. And I'll put a link to that when I put this up on YouTube. Yeah, exactly. That'd be great. But today we're going to talk about boundaries, social media, mm -hmm. yeah, and how to create space and reduce your stress. Yeah. Yeah. Especially after a week, like we've had, we all need that. It's absolutely critical. Um, one thing that I could start to, when I talk about this is my own experience because I can always you can always speak about yourself and that's the easiest place to start because you, you know so flashback to about 2017 I was you know in this in these cohorts of like you got to get on social media and do this and I was I was pretty active on Facebook but I wasn't understanding Instagram and I wanted to get more active on that and I was really wanting to push my web design business at the time and 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 so I wake up and the first thing I, I do is I spend time on Instagram. And then the rest of the day would feel horrible. And I'd be like, what's going on? And finally, I started realizing after a while, after so many times, that that's, that's, not, that's not a healthy way to wake up. You, you really shouldn't look at, you know, it's like these perfect pictures of people this is not a very healthy way to um, start your day, nor is it um, very productive. And so I immediately stopped doing that and started evaluating other habits that would be more fruitful for me. And I noticed when I started getting off Instagram and I even reduced a little bit of my Facebook because I was on that pretty actively, I felt better and it wasn't obsessing about things as much. I wasn't obsessing about what, what I was doing wrong or what, you know, and, and always that FOMO, it, that FOMO hits you so hard. Oh my God. And, and, and then I realized, oh, I didn't need to check my email all the time and started uh, setting boundaries around that and studying what other people recommended for habits. This one, um, I can't remember who it was, but I think it's like some kind of Zen blogger was recommending even deleting your um, social media apps on the weekends. So you don't, you know, maybe use them for work or you have certain habits, but deleting them so you don't necessarily keep going to them over and over. And then you can reinstall them for a purpose. And I've done that a lot with Facebook to only um, use it for, 
certain specific reasons. Remember, you talked about that at one of our meetings was go on there and do something specific. Go on exactly. there with a mission. Yeah. Of someone you're following. I'm letting some people in right now. Of course. Someone you're following or something you want to post, but this mindless scrolling. Right. What right. we're seeing isn't reality, right? It's not, that's not, you're not seeing the sadness and the bad that you're seeing a, a certain picture of people's lives. Right, right. Exactly. So, um, what, so one of the platforms I'm very active on is LinkedIn, and I've been studying that over the past um, year or so, and realizing that if I'm intentional about who I want to seek out and talk to there, I'm going to have a lot more interaction and the type of interactions I want. And so uh, I think a lot of people just think they have to go on LinkedIn, scroll, and just interact with whoever they see. And like, no, you actually want to create a list, like, you know, in Excel or Word or whatever, and a physical separate list, and then um, engage with those people and even go as far to create a, a link so you can see their posts and then, you know, shower them with love and give them awesome comments to let them know that you care about what they're saying or um, sharing, actually resharing what they're uh, promoting, those types of things. That's really where the engagement is. And that's, that's when people talk about connecting on social media that and, and, and engagement, that's what that is. It's not scrolling and just liking whatever you see because that that's mind numbing and it it's a rabbit hole as we all know you just go down that rabbit hole and half an hour later you're like oh god what did i do i feel and i'd like to this is my analogies i like to say um it's like eating that big bag of cheetos you're like i just want to eat a few cheetos and then you know it's like this is my favorite snack food i need i don't buy cheetos unless i really want to eat them because i'll just eat the whole bag so um You'll, you'll have one or two and you're like, oh, these are really delicious. I'm going to have some more. And then it's just like scrolling. You keep eating the Cheetos and all of a sudden the bag's gone. You're, the bag's empty and you're like, they're all gone. You're like, oh God. And that's that's the same kind of feeling, I think, when you just scroll because you're just, you don't, it's just that like junky food feeling of like, ew, gross. I feel like I'm going to throw up now. <laughs> <laughs> so setting and having an intention when you go on social media. Yep. And then setting some time limits, like maybe not doing first thing in the morning, but do you give yourself a little time budget as to when you're going to go and post? And Absolutely. And I schedule things because as a business owner, I think that's critical. Um, you have strategy around what you're going to post and, and meaning and, and you know, have like, you know, want to post at certain times of the day. There's all kinds of things around that. But I think just being intentional is really important. And, and I actually will set a timer when I get on LinkedIn specifically so I can measure how much time I'm spending on there. And, and that forces me to really pay attention to what I need to get done and not just like dilly dally or get lost down that rabbit hole, <laughs> have that accountability. And so you and I are business owners. So we are on these platforms to try to connect with people and ultimately drum up more business. But even our civilians, right? Like a person who's not a business owner could apply these principles of time limits, Go on there, look for your your close friends that post a lot of happy things, cute puppies, cute kids. Exactly, because the algorithms will pay attention to who you're looking at the most, and so they'll rise to the surface. I was just talking about this with a friend this morning about how he was saying, "Oh, I miss seeing posts from this person. I need to I need to go purposely to their page or their you know their Instagram feed or whatever and and like so I that that so that the the systems know I want to see that person. It's it's all intentional." And I don't know if everybody knows about the algorithms. Is there like a 30 second synopsis you could give us of how that works, how they how they show us what they show us? Well, I don't know if I'm the best expert. I mean, part of it too is I actually turn off as much of the ads as possible. Like I use this really um, amazing uh, Chrome extension called FB Purity and I'll give you the details and you can send the link, links about these all these software things I talk about. That is amazing. So I, I discovered this, filter back in 2017 after uh, the election and just, you know, wow, like just being shocked every time I opened up Facebook, it was just too much. Like the news feed, the, the, the ads, seeing certain people, I was like, no, this has to stop. I want to be on here with purpose. And so that filter has allowed me to control what I see and what I don't see. And so I, whatever I see on Facebook is very much different than the last, probably most of you. And I'm very grateful for it. But if I get on my phone, I can't do that. And that's probably where the algorithms allowed us. So, you know, I see ads that are aimed at me about 
um, being a mom or being a business owner. And then I also, if I engage with someone last week, I'm going to see more posts about them. That's really in a nutshell. That's how the algorithms work. They're really aiming. They have like data on you. They're collecting and they're watching your habits. They're just trying to um, give you what they think you want and what people want to sell to you. <laughs> so basically Cheetos ads, you get a lot of those. Yeah, I actually do get the fire Cheeto ads. <laughs> <laughs> The damn phone's listening to me, I'm sure, right now. I was going <laughs> to post some next week. <laughs> okay, so we talked about time and intention. What are some other tips for using these tools versus letting them use us? Yeah, I think setting boundaries is, is an important one. So one thing that I've noticed, I've talked about with lots of my colleagues and, and just people on LinkedIn that I'm getting to be um, closer with, is what is your morning habit? Because going back to that, you know, my example of me waking up and checking Instagram, that was just, no, that that's just, that's just a really awful way to start the day. And so I think the intention is to start, you know, that's your precious time and, and figure out what time is precious to you. Like, is it, is your thinking time better in the afternoon? Is it in the morning? Like just kind of, you know, the even logging, I've, I've seen even, gosh, even like some of the downloadable, like PDFs that they sent, had like check, logging your time and seeing what your most valuable time is. and and, and, and making that sacred and, and honoring that. And then, then, and then if it's like, you know, you're a little bit less sharp, that's maybe a good time to check social media, you know, and, and really um, put a time, time box that thing, you know, make sure that you don't uh, spend more time than you want and have intention. Um, but also just, you know, like I said, if you need to delete the app, if it's too tempting for you, delete it off your phone. Or there's even tools um, that have been around a long time that will prevent you from checking Facebook for certain amounts of time. There's all kinds of um, like habit-based tools that will uh, help you not not do that. I love this idea of creating a time budget, kind of like how you would do a money budget, right? Like how because you know you hear, oh, I don't have time. I'm so busy. I don't have time. Yeah. But I bet if we really sat down and you know, pieced out how much time we spent doing these sort of mindless activities, you might be able to have time to do a workout or have time to spend with yeah. you or cook a healthy meal or. Exactly. And no, I, did, I, you know, becoming a mother was like the best shocker for me to understand what, what time really meant and nothing like the marker of time with watching uh, your, your kids grow up and you're like, wow, yeah, here it's this precious. And I feel like Maybe even since the pandemic, I, I have a new appreciation of time as a commodity more than money. And I don't think I really understood that. And now I I, re I think I'm getting closer to that understanding of an appreciation. What is your time worth? Yeah. Yeah. How are you spending your, your time dollars? Exactly. Yeah. Because it's so it's just, it's so valuable. And, and, and who you surround yourself with, all those things are really meaningful. And, and, you know, social media plays a role in that now because it's so integrated into our lives. So, you know, anytime you pick up your phone, which I think is the most common way people check it, are you checking it while you're watching TV? Like, are you checking, you know, are you, are how are you, are you doing it just to numb yourself because you feel bad and you want, don't want to feel your feelings? <laughs> like I've done that before. I'm guilty. Uh, you know, is there, and I've done this too, where another, another hack that's helped me is I, I'll delete the apps and then put a Kindle app or some other app. It, even, I even played um, Scrabble for a while or words, words with friends just to have another habit to go to, to kind of fill that void. I think that's also been helpful for me and other people I've talked to, um, to play around with for like maybe 30 days or a week and see how that feels. If you're, you know, if it's, if it's, you're seeing yourself have um, some addiction with this there's other ways other tools you can play with to to not feel like you're like oh god now what do I do you know kind of have that like frenzy of like what what am I you know I want to go my phone and do something so my thumbs want to go like this I need to do <laughs> or like standing you know if you're standing in line waiting at the grocery store you know if you're that's those are the times when that 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 impulse really will strike okay do any of you guys have a question for Nedra? Now's your chance. You can unmute yourself if you're muted and fire away. I'll give us a second. Let's see. I can only see my box and Nedra's box. And if you want to remain anonymous, that's cool too. <laughs> and... Um, Okay, did we go through all of your tips on time? Oh, there's Julia. Julia, what do you have to say? 
So I have a question for you. So I'm on Instagram and I love Instagram. I mean, I think it's fun. So I am actually on there more for pleasure than for business. <laughs> but um, well, two things really. One is I, I have three different business accounts because just because. Um, and I find that my business account is kind of my personal account too. And I can't decide if that's a wonderful thing because people get to know me for who I am. I don't put a ton of personal stuff there, but I do put some. So I guess my first question is, do you recommend putting some personal things on your account so people get to know you as well as your business? And then I guess my second question is, would you, um, or I guess if the answer is no to that, do you think it's better to like go on Instagram for a half an hour to have fun and then come back to it later for 10 minutes just for business? Do you know what I mean? Like kind of yeah. them so it doesn't turn into like. Yeah, I, I think you're onto something, Julia. I think it's good to kind of like somebody says, put, put the put the CEO cap on and then take it off. I, it, it helps me a lot when I'm as a filter to know what I'm doing and what my purpose is at the moment. So I would recommend, and I, this is what I've seen my my influencers and people I, I I respect are doing on Instagram and other places is yeah there's definitely especially since the pandemic there's much more of an influx to be to show more of your authentic vulnerable side on social media people want to see that so I think um, to allow that to kind of enter in a little bit is a is a great thing and um, you know everyone's got different. Uh, comfort zones and comfort levels with that so you have to figure out what what do you feel good about putting out there publicly and you know some people are really apprehensive about putting pictures of their ch children you know there's there's just you have to figure out what your boundaries and where you draw a line and and see what that feels like for you but I just you know it's always good to dip your toe in and try it out and see how it feels and then if, if it doesn't feel comfortable you can just stop and go back to what you're doing okay thanks sure yeah, I find I have that sort of crossover too, Julia, of business and personal. I've done that more on my Facebook page. I just post whatever. If it's music I like or some silly thing or because that's me. That's my personality. <laughs> well, and I think if you have a really personal business, like my business is really interacting on a very personal level with people, I think it helps if they get to know me a little bit mm -hmm. more about who I am before they kind of entrust me with their deepest darkest <laughs> stuff secrets <laughs> well it attracts the right client too if that's what i've learned I've, I've i used to have quite the shield up especially in my newsletters and in the last year i've experimented with about like one of the one of my favorite newsletters i wrote about cindy lopper and the wwf and how they are a great example of marketing styles and I felt pretty vulnerable writing that. And then once I put it out there, I got really good reaction. I'm like, oh yeah, this, I can write about these things. So I think it's really important to be comfortable with it and try it out and not just jump into it because it's it's definitely uncomfortable um, depending on what kind of business you're running. So you have to kind of weigh out what, yeah, what, what do people want and then understand who you want to attract. I, like for example, I did a survey with my clients and learned that it was really refreshing to know that a lot of them like Star Wars and sci-fi and superheroes, just like me. So I can easily talk about that when I talk about marketing and they like it. <laughs> it's like, oh, it's a huge relief and, and it makes it a lot more fun. And I can, you know, and bring baby Yoda into the picture and, and, and just have a lot, just be more me. And it's so nice. And I don't have to put, I don't have to put that shield up so much. I was so hoping we were going to talk about baby Yoda today. I am, I'm late <laughs> to the party, but I'm watching it now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah what do you want to talk about <laughs> oh no i can see us going in this whole rabbit hole i know i know it's <laughs> it, it's a slippery slope we gotta be careful <laughs> <laughs> okay does anybody else have questions for nedra fire away nedra i loved that um i wonder if there's a way you could link i could link to your wwe post that you sent out oh yeah i have it i i, I can definitely I'll put that in the yeah, in the yeah. box too when i put up the recording because that was yeah. such a great you tell it was basically like crossover marketing is what yeah exactly about, but in a super fun way yeah yeah it was funny because i was and that's what's so great about if you can inter interject more of your personal into your business like you know i was just watching goonies with my family and we were watching that I don't know if you remember this from the 80s, but there was this crazy two-part video that City Lopper made with WWF um, 
folks and and then the Goonies characters and it was just like wow my head and then even Steven Spielberg made an appearance and as a kid I didn't understand the impact but I'm just like as an adult I'm like holy crap there was a lot going on in these videos that was just that like who who all benefited and I just who I was like rolled this who was the guy yeah. that was like this is a great like, idea Oh my gosh, this is amazing. Like I got all goosebumpy and excited about it. I'm like, I have to share this this concept. So yeah, it's fun when you see those aha moments and you, you gotta let them out. Okay, so you're on Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn. Which of those do you say or are you are you, are you on any other uh no, sites or, yeah. So, <laughs> that's yeah, bad. <laughs> And you use okay. LinkedIn to connect with other business owners. Yeah, yeah. Actually, LinkedIn's my go-to. I've had so much fun on there. I never thought I'd say that because a year ago or more, I thought it was so stodgy and and very resume, you know, all your resume stuffs on there, and you know, very stiff, corporate. And and no, I've I've completely blown that image out of the water. And and I'm actually going to be releasing a LinkedIn masterclass in about ten days to teach people what I've learned and how to actually authentically connect with people on LinkedIn and build up and attract more clients. And it's been amazing. And I've met really, truly new good friends on LinkedIn this way. And I never thought it would be possible. And it's so nice to be able to tell everyone this today and, and still enjoy it. And, um, and again, it's all about intention. It's, I don't scroll. I have a top 50 people I interact with a lot. Uh, I share things. I give a lot of love through comments. Um, it's really cool. Yeah, I was on it for years, but I wasn't really, I didn't really know what to do with it. I was like, is this for if you're looking for a job? And then just since yeah. the pandemic, I've been doing what you said, go on, post something, comment on somebody else's video, mm -hmm. interact with people. I can't remember if this was in one of your classes, we talked about this or one of your meetings, but they said, uh, someone told me, Pretend like it's an actual in-person interaction. You wouldn't just walk by somebody and go, like, <laughs> right? Exactly. <laughs> Hello. And have an actual interaction as a person, not yeah. just as a. Yeah. Yeah. And the direct messaging is really where the magic is. And it actually is like that on Instagram. I just haven't, uh, I've just put more energy into LinkedIn, but I know I've, I've had success on Instagram, just direct messaging people and, and being personable and asking the right questions. But um, I've been able to have lots of off, off, off the grid or off, off LinkedIn conversations on Zoom and phone that have been amazing and transformational of, of building referral partners and getting work. And it's, it's really, it's really powerful. Oh, now this kind of reminds me of when I was on dating apps. I had this rule that I had a couple messages and then I was like, let's meet in person. Let's get on. Yeah. <laughs> Is that kind of how you approach it? Like a little bit of there and then like, bit. all right, here's my email. Let's, let's get in yeah. contact. Let's yeah. I've actually heard someone else compare it to that, especially because um, I, when I teach the class, I talk about how important it is to have the right profile and the right statement. And that's very much like it is in the dating app. So uh, yeah, there's definitely a lot of parallel universes colliding here. Um, but I will say you have to be careful when you want to take that conversation offline because um, you're seeing a lot of people, if you want to use the dating references, like cut to the chase and like want that first date right away when you don't have anything in common or not even talking. I get these every day. People are like, hey, let's hop on the phone for 10 minutes. I'm like, I don't know who you are. Why you? Why do I should I care about you? Like I have my time's precious going back to time. Right. So um, it's just really bizarre that that that's happening. But I don't I don't invest in those people because they're not investing in me. They're not they're not. They don't, the immediate just, hard sell of I'm trying to put yeah. something down your throat rather than I'd like to spend some time getting to know you. Exactly. It's, it's and a lot of times just a bot. It's just a canned message you're sending out to. It's not personal. So creating relationships, managing your time, which a lot of this applies to real life stuff. Yeah, right? uh, those, <laughs> yeah. setting boundaries, all those, yeah, they all add up and, and really make an impact. And so you personally, how do you feel like applying these principles to your life? How has it benefited you, say, in the last year or so? Well, yeah, with the pandemic, it's helped me turn inward and really evaluate what's important for me and, you know, who I want to be spending time with and what, what, am I, what I want to be doing. And so um, one of the new habits I picked up over this past, gosh, really, month 11, 12, I don't know. Anyway, um, 
I started journaling when I wake up in the morning and that's been amazing. And I've been kind of playing with the five minute journal prompts as well. And that's been, wow, that's powerful. And, uh, and also reading uh, inspirational books to start out my day. So I have that mindset in, in place. And I'll tell you, it has really helped me with my business and helped me with my clients to have that in my brain first thing in the morning versus like checking the email, checking the news, check, you know, all the default things that we tend to do, but aren't good for us. I love it. So that helps you sort of set an intention for the day or. Yeah, definitely. And it's helped me get through some books that I was just talking about this with a really good colleague about how it's been, I've been able to savor books that, you know, normally I would have tried to read in like a weekend, but instead I've read it over the course of a month. And so I'm able to like, you know, read a few, read like a half a chapter and really ingest it and, and then talk through it maybe with a with a client or a colleague and, and apply that what I learned and then see the benefit versus like just jamming all my head for one weekend and hoping I remember it. So I, it's been an interesting experiment. I really encourage people to play with that, especially if you love reading. I'm a huge reader. So starting your day by reading, journaling, and do you do actual like pen and paper journal? Writing? Yeah, I've learned that. Yes, I learned that notebooks and all kind. Yeah, pen. That's the best way for me to. Um, process and and also remember things but you know i know a lot of folks out there are really big into audiobooks and podcasts and that could be a great way to start your day too it doesn't have to be re, you know again it's all about the medium it doesn't have to be uh picking up a book it could be you know something you hear or you know it could be another activity um maybe exercise going for a walk i mean just whatever um support support systems this is what this is another thing i've been focusing on and with the help of Tia Ho, who's an amazing person, she's helped me kind of figure out what my support systems are too. Tap into them. They're, I like to picture like a bunch of gold coins on the ground and all I have to do is go reach down and pick them up, but I have to be looking for them, but yeah, they're yeah. everywhere. Exactly. <laughs> Who is your support system? What are the things that help you and make you feel good? Not the things that make you feel Right, right. Like one of mine is music. Like if I, you know, listen to some songs, I really appreciate it. it. Really makes my day, and I can tell if I don't. And I mean, it's so simple, but yet it's it took me a while to figure it out. And I, I just encourage everyone to explore that. And you know, I think keeping a journal or keeping a track of that to see what feels good over the course of a few weeks will really help you uh, assess what is working, what's not. Because data is your best friend. It. it I really believe in science. It, it really can help you understand what's going on. <laughs> Collect all the data, put it together. Exactly. And then decide if you want to make changes in your behavior. Yeah, and January is like the best month to do it, right? It's a very quiet month. Um, it's, you know, not a lot of holidays. It's like coming off the whole, yeah, the whole like hubbub of Christmas. And yeah, it's it's a nice, it's a nice time to reflect on all that, I believe. All right. I feel like we could chat about you, about these concepts for hours and hours, but I know you've got stuff to do. You're a busy woman. <laughs> so last call for anybody questions for Nedra. Uh, any of these impl that you could Im implement this week, any of these things that you want to work on as far as your personal social media plan or mindfulness plan or self-care, whatever you want to call it. I like the time budget one, like actually billable hours right if I was actually charging a client for this time how am I using that block of time and is it to my benefit maybe I'll start actually keeping a little spreadsheet of my time mm -hmm. I like it all right anything else you want to tell us no but it made me you just made me think of this book by Laura Vanderkam about time I, I don't remember the title I'll, I'll I can reference it later um it, she she encourages everyone especially um, it was really aimed at more working moms, but anyone that wants to track their time, we have 168 hours a week, I believe. Um, I, I think that was, it was kind of the concept of the book. Anyway, she had like a little like Excel sheet or something she had you fill out and keep track of your time. And I did that activity back when my daughter was four and it was just like eye opening to see. I think that's when I started realizing how much time I was spending on social media that I was wasting and, and wasn't really hold, held accountable for that. And it, it, definitely turn the wheels in my brain to think about time in a different concept. So that's, that was a, that book was very impactful. Cool. Okay. So we'll get together and get all these links and I'll put them yeah. in the um, little box below when we put this mm -hmm. up on YouTube. If you guys are not subscribed to my YouTube page, 
do it because I post mm, just about once a week now, either a, a fitnessy video meditation or an interview. Um, and Nedra will put a plug to your next workshop you got coming up in the next two weeks. Mm -hmm. And your website, nedraresinas.com, mm -hmm. where you can find more Nedra, because we all need more Nedra in our lives. <laughs> Thanks, Anne. <laughs> and I appreciate you. I appreciate your time and these good tips. And I appreciate all you ladies for tuning in. And Happy New Year. Yeah, Happy New Year. Thanks, Anne. It's really fun being here today. Thanks for chatting with us. This is all good, good stuff to implement. Thanks, Anne.